speaking of the Sports Authority of Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County. It's a cold morning out, but uh, you've got your start now, and the rest of the day will only be better. <laughs> so uh, we got a, it looks like a very full agenda today, but I think it will uh, move very well with the items that are on it. And our first item of business this morning will be to ask our attorney, Margaret Darby, for the code. appealed to the Chancery Court of Davidson County for review under a common law writ of certiorari. Any appeal must be filed within 60 days after the entry of a final decision by the board. Any person or other entity considering an appeal should consult with an, with an attorney to ensure that time and procedural requirements are met. Thank you very much. And you've been given the mail the minutes of the December meeting. Uh, are there any additions, corrections? Hearing none, none, do I have a motion to approve the minutes for December? So moved. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes approved. Uh, and we'll go to uh, Alfonso for the Sports Authority Ad Hoc Committee Report, uh, which I want to compliment the committee. They work very diligently after being asked to do a job, and, and uh, he will report on that this morning. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you would look in the information packet behind tab three, there is a copy of the uh, job announcement. And what the committee uh, ultimately did was we focused on the announcement for the executive director position initially, uh, knowing that the job description would be built off of that, functional job description would be built off that. But our desire was to go ahead and get the announcement pulled together because it would have the key elements for the job description in place and then be able to start the process in terms of moving forward with getting the announcement posted and getting the position filled. Then from there, we would transition to, uh, if it's still the will of the, the board, for this ad hoc committee to work with the executive director on the job description for the second position uh, as well. So what you have in front of you is a copy of that announcement. I won't read the announcement to you, but just will highlight a few uh, key points. If you look, the announcement is, is situated in a way such that there's a general overview statement uh, describing the position, and then there are key duties that have been identified uh, relative to the position. And you can see there those key duties center around um, overseeing contractual arrangements. They get into fiscal management as well as uh, ensuring that there's compliance from all tenants that are participating at any level within the building, uh, maintaining relationships uh, with our key partners, uh, both the sports teams as well as other organizations that may use the facilities, and other things that you can see there under those duties. <clears throat> Under minimum requirements, um, you see that we recommend that there be at least a bachelor's degree or, or relevant experience, or excuse me, at least a bachelor's degree with a focus in business accounting or communications, public relations. Then this, the last section, the preferred candidate, is an area that we thought were, was critical to list uh, competencies of this position. Um, and we use the word preferred because all, we may not have a candidate that hits all of these competencies, but these are, we feel like, are very critical. So I'll spend a little more time there. Uh, one is strategic leadership. Uh, we feel like to lead this board and to execute what needs to happen, uh, the executive director needs to have strategic vision and be able to lead from a strategic standpoint. Strong written and oral communication skills we feel like is critical. Organizational, administrative, and, fin and financial management skills also just by nature of what the role entails. Um, comfortable with hands-on uh, and willing to do essential tasks, we felt like this is definitely a strategic leadership position, but the individual would have to be willing to get in and, and get his or her hands dirty as well. Uh, one thing that we, we think is very critical uh, is that the individual have an ability to analyze uh, legal documents and understand contracts and financial data as it relates to some of this information. And uh, this final one, in terms of being 
uh, attentive to details and being a self-starter, we felt like would be essential for the position as well, simply because we see this role as an individual that would bring things to the board. And the board, being a volunteer board, uh, would not have a pulse on things going on. So we need that self-starter. And we also need someone to be able to pay attention to the details as in the board would not be able to do that because the board isn't working on these things from a day-to-day -day basis. So those are the key components of the announcement. Uh, you'll notice that at the top there is no, uh, no issue date or uh, filing date, nor is there a salary. Uh, we do have a recommendation that we'd like to put before the board uh, in terms of a salary, but that we know would need to be approved by Metro Finance. And um, Mr. Chair, I'm not sure if it's appropriate for you to have that conversation with uh, Metro Finance or me, but we, I'm comfortable doing it either way. But the committee's recommendation is that the uh, position be posted with the salary item, line item to be up to but not exceed $100,000. And I believe that there's been some conversation with uh, our finance director for the city and somewhere in the range, I think we're within the range. Uh, we, we are within the range according to the information that was shared with us uh, by Metro HR uh, for the position. Uh, we, that, I think that position is almost pretty comfortably in the middle right. of that range. Yep. And, and if I might add, the committee, uh, we've met a couple times in lively discussion, very valuable input from all of the committee members, as well as significant support and input from Metro HR. We right. thought it was phenomenal. Right. Well, I think you've done an outstanding job, the committee, and it's a very well written uh, job uh, analysis, job description for the position. and. Uh, we're ready to, uh, unless someone has some questions or comments from the board, we'd be ready to post it uh, uh, and uh, have human resources post it. And I believe that the requirement will be for it stand for about seven days. We want to move this as quickly as we can. And it's been known for some time that uh, uh, this job was becoming available, so we need to get that done. Anybody have any comments about it or would like to speak to the, uh, what the committee has done? I have a question. Is, is, is seven days, is that what we're going to recommend right. to HR? Yeah, I think, that's okay. a, I think that we have to allow that much, and I think that's what we're going to ask them to do. I mean, we, it's, their, it's their guideline, but we're going to stay with it. Okay. Yeah. So we would um, vote to approve this subject to right. approval by uh, Metro Finance? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we, we can take yes for an answer. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank, thank you, Rich. <laughs> Because <laughs> that's important because we want to we want to get this taken care of and that's very important. Okay, now I hear a recommendation. Well, you, you uh, the committee can make a recommendation. So you want to go ahead and recommend that we accept your report and move forward? I, I, we'd like to recommend that this report be accepted, including the uh, job posting so that we could go ahead and move forward with the salary item to be listed as up to uh, $100,000. Okay. Second. Okay. Motion is made and second. Is there further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Well, we will move immediately as of today with the Human Resource Department and, and I'll go ahead and say this now. Hopefully, we'll have a meeting before the next scheduled monthly meeting, a call meeting to take care of this position and uh, Monica tells me we may have a, some, a budget uh, guidelines by then, and we might have a, have a special meeting anyway. So we'll, we may have to do that to, to move this forward as quickly as we can. Yeah. Would you like to get advance on that? I'm going to do Monday at what? <laughs> 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 Wasn't quite ready today for so. Got to wait till Monday. Got to wait till Monday, okay. Okay. Mr. Chair, I just wondered, what is the time frame then for once we give this to HR for how long is it posted and when can we expect Seven it? days posted and then they'll bring to us uh, 
can we're going to ask them i think appropriately to bring uh no more than five candidates for us to be able to screen and know and uh I've been thinking about how best to do that uh, and bring a recommendation to the board and in order that uh, I think that if Alfonso is willing to work with HR along those lines for, as our agent with them, that would be very appropriate uh, yeah. as we move forward with this. Let me find that. Right, Any good. other questions or comments? Just, just one last comment. Uh, we were informed by the uh, representatives from HR, who again did a fine job working with us, that if we post this for seven days, there will be several hundred applicants. Mm -hmm. And so they will help call that down to about five finalists for us. So that's just want the board to know that's a significant amount of work that they will be doing on our, part, on our behalf. And we're going to ask them to do it as quickly as they can, but we have to allow them the time they need to do it. Right. Because we want to write. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Mr. Mines here, and maybe he can fill us in on time and sure. situation. Sure. From here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to come to the podium. No, no. <laughs> uh, immediately, immediately after uh, this man here is done with the bulk of the work, I'm kind of, kind of watching over it, but we will, we will. Ms. Madden will over, uh, oversee and assess the application based on the job announcement that we, job posting that we put out here, and we will call those down in, in several different ways and be able to get those back to Based on the number of applicants, will be how fast we can do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jane knows as well as I do that when you get in a hurry, you make a mistake. So we, we, wanna, we, we don't want to slow the process, but we want to take our time and be able to be able to present you the, the five uh, recommendations that you speak and it may, it may be less, maybe more than that because some may be so close to each other that you might want to look at that. Then we'll talk about how we're going to go forward with that process if you don't mind. Okay. Any other questions? I have a question. So how, <clears throat> excuse me, what do you anticipate the time on, on actually it being posted on the website? And will that take well, a day? Well, since uh, Mr. Rieberlin has already given his blessed verbiage, and it is in a minute, when I, I told him <laughs> that typically we run it through uh, our process in terms of going through the office and we get an actual uh, uh, paper, so to speak, approval, but he's already approved it on the front end in a minute, so we could probably do it in the next couple of days. Uh, now, James probably ready, we're probably ready to just go ahead and hit, the, hit it, put it on the website. It's gone, we're ready to go. And Jane usually uh, sets them as they go along anyway. She's pretty good, pretty fast at doing that. So uh, I would say within the next couple of weeks, you, you, you should have something uh, mm -hmm. to look at, good. to review. And how we're going to do that depends on what our conversation is going to be going forward. Okay? And, and while you're talking, we see a head shaking over there, agreeing that this is. <laughs> 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 Okay, very good. All right. That's good timing. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Alfonso. You're welcome. Uh, Thank you to the committee. Right. <laughs> See, they're leaving now, so they can go ahead and go to work on it, uh, Coach. <laughs> okay. Some of you, uh, uh, hopefully all of you saw that uh, there's some things taking place here at Bridgestone that will make it much more uh, meaningful to the new uh, Music Center Center, and there's going to be some improvements on the side here. And we've asked Rich to come today to talk about these improvements on the south uh, entrance side, and I think you're going to, uh, I think you know the need, and he's going to talk about them. Good. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, be good. Uh, just kind of, if you think about over the past year, I think we have made some significant progress in the phys physical facilities uh, of the, the stadium and 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 here at the arena. Uh, both facilities are are now uh, are teenagers. 
uh, and, and need a little uh, and needed a little remedial work done. Uh, we we you know, put uh, efforts in place for this for the stadium for the improvements that were open this year. I think we saw a major difference in the stadium operation this year. Uh, and we put a place in place a, a fund for sort of the ongoing uh, improvements inside the building here at Bridgestone, uh, as well as some energy retrofits we're going to do. And it's sort of the, the last piece of this, um, at least for for right now, is sort of the outside of, of the building especially uh, on the on the south entrance to the building if you think about it uh, and, and if you walk out the back door you see uh, you have a new neighbor uh, that's going to open in May there's probably right at a billion dollars between the hotel the Country Music Hall of Fame the Convention Center that have been spent uh, in this downtown area and, and it just seemed to us as we were talking with the predators and the man team management that the back the what, what's always been considered the back door of the arena needs a facelift and, and the building doesn't really need to have a front door and a back door but it needs to have two front doors and with 1800 car garage at the convention center you're going to see a lot more activity uh, of people coming into the building using the south entrance than we've seen before and so we, we sat down with the predators and sort of think about what we could do it within a reasonable budget to sort of fix up the, to clean up improve sort of the south side of the building and what you're seeing are some very basic initial uh, artist uh, renderings of what uh, we think it could look like with the idea being that we wanted to, to sort of blend in with the convention center across the street. Perhaps use some of the same limestone that's over there. I mean, we're still working on all the details, but so that when, when, when visitors come to town, public uses it. It's sort of a seamless building. It's, it's all one big major new complex uh, for the city and to do that we need to spend a little money on the back on, on what was the back side of the arena and so what uh, what the mayor has done is we've filed a, a, a spending request called a capital spending plan with the Metro Council which basically authorizes us to spend um, seven million dollars uh, on, on the on the on the south entrance of the facility. Uh, we think um, uh, it's critical for the city is obviously we all talk about it it is the city City's building uh, and we need to make investments in it and if you look at the, the renderings I think you can see some of the um, you know a little more excitement that you're gonna see we if you look at the front of the building now uh, on hockey nights and other event nights there's large crowds gathering and it's a very festive kind of occasion if you if, if, if this view here you see is right across kind of looking from the Convention Center there's going to be uh, we're also going to spend some money on Fifth Avenue to improve Fifth Avenue from the blocks all the way from uh, uh, KVB all the way to Broadway so it's really going to sort of become a whole downtown entertainment district is what it really is going to become and and we think just to open up the backside of the arena makes a lot of sense uh, the details again are still being worked out uh, we asked the predators to get with populace who the, the, the original architects on the building to sort of see what could be done uh, and and to open it up might get Sean to, to give a few more details in terms of where they stand on that but um, you know we don't have anything drawn yet it's all kind of being conceptually designed now but the idea being that we would like to get the work done uh, as quickly as possible and ideally um, in time for hockey season next October uh, or, or sooner and so which is sort of the convention center opens in May the Omni and the Hall of Fame open in the October time frame so if we can get this done sort of within that whole frame uh, for the visitors come to the city we'll have just sort of a I think really one of the most exciting complexes that you're gonna see anywhere in the country Sean you want to any, anything try to answer that yeah uh -huh. yeah I know it'll be hard but yeah. Uh, as Rich said, uh, probably three months ago, we started working with the mayor's office to say, look, we have this new campus with the Hall of Fame, the Omni Hotel, the new convention center, and about 2,500 parking spots between the Omni and, and the new convention center. And our back door, if you will, is, is just what it is. It's the back door. When the building was built, it was positioned as such as to be the ugly side of the building, a physical plant, garages, there was nothing over there. That back entranceway probably accounted for about five to seven percent of our guests entered you know, that side of the building. With the new campus igniting, you know, our goal is twofold. One, for our own events, make sure that we take care of the people that were coming through that back way now and expand the doorways, because now we're probably gonna have 25, 30, 35 percent of our guests coming through that area. You have to make sure we facilitate them properly. Uh, the other is, let's bring new personality to the building on that side to make sure that when they get here, we can have some different offerings for them. The real purpose of it was, though, to connect that new campus to the excitement of Broadway and not cause this building to be a barrier between the two of them. Right now, when you walk down Fifth Avenue, it's almost 
what do you call it, the canyon of concrete. You know, it's not a very welcoming area. You don't think there's a connector. But now when you have the convention center come online, the Omni come online, you have all those visitors, which is forecasted to be five, 700,000, whatever it may be. How do we get those people from that area down to Broadway? Well, the way to do it is use our building as a conduit and not an obstacle. So when you look at the other picture, notice I don't have a clicker. People don't trust me on PowerPoint. That's Jeff's tool. But um, when you see right now that glass fa facade of the entranceway, right now that is forward about 60 feet. The idea is to push that into the building a little bit further, and now you have a plaza that we're creating, very similar to the front side of the building. Also, right now you have a lot of concrete walls separating stairwells and ramps, and it's just very, very odd space. Get rid of all that, flatten the plaza as much as you can, and we need to tear it because of the grading issues, just like the convention center <coughs> plaza is. So we're gonna marry that, and now we have created an indoor-outdoor space for that plaza for a gathering area, not just for our events, but when other people come to the building. Off on the glass structure to the left when you're looking at the picture, um, because of the way the building's angled, we're going to have an opportunity to bring to life some retail space in that area. Um, programming that now, look forward to working with the board to explain what our vision is, maybe at the next meeting. But the idea is to probably have some type of a restaurant shop in there, a little bit more transient in nature where people can visit you know, quickly in and out. Maybe we relocate our team store back to that area, which is backstage for concerts. Right now our team store is front of stage for concerts mm -hmm. and it's closed 100 times a year when we have events because you can't have that open. So it's wasting a lot of space in the building. And then you could also have people walk up, maybe some transient parking that's over there. Then when you look at the shell of the rehearsal hall, kind of the barn shaped structure is, how do we bring life to the convention center events? We'll put a, a video board up there where we could show our own games, maybe from time to time and grow, obviously, show what's happening in the building from a concert standpoint out there. We plan on closing Fifth Avenue from time to time for larger events. So you're really creating something a little bit more festive. The lower area, the gold lit up area, perhaps some of that is LED in nature, which forms as a marquee for us, for the convention center, for other city events. But then when you go to the other picture, you can see that's the corner of Fifth and DeMumbrian. Um, actually carve into not the rehearsal hall space, but there's some wasted wall space that's in there and literally cut the corner off so you're softening that turn. And now you have a real connector from the front door of the convention center right on down Fifth Avenue to Broadway. Further on down in that picture you see on the left hand side um, a space that I think is labeled, I don't have my glasses, restaurant. Very original uh, marketing term. Clever name. Um, basically, that's the. Come up with we, we, yes, you did. <laughs> but uh, that's the patron entrance that is there right now. It's right across from the Hilton. There is a storage room that runs almost the length of uh, from Demumbrian to the Patron Club right now. It's parallel to Fifth Avenue, parallel to our concourse. Um, that is only used for storage right now. I know originally in the plans it was supposed to be built out for some personality or hospitality space. The plan is to change that glass wall or concrete wall into glass. Do the same on the, con on the concourse side and create more of a, a, a cool vibe restaurant that's open every day and you're in and out of that space. So people could literally walk through our building to get down to Fifth Avenue over to Broadway, walk around it, but every night will be a little bit more festive and not just for 150 nights a year or just the convention center's 150, 200 events a year. You combine the two and we're creating something pretty special. So it's very exciting, very early in the design stage. If you remember when Adam from Populous came to the visioning study in front of all of you, we didn't know about this at all. But if you remember, I was a little upset with him because he showed some things. We need to do this on the backside. We need to do this on the backside. I said, Adam, it's great that you're doing that, but you know, where are we going to come up with all you know, the money? There's so many needs in the building, but this was part of his vision because of how people are going to change how they come into the building. So, yeah, just, to, just to summarize, uh, you know, we obviously think it's critical to spend a little bit of money uh, to tie it into what, what's going on to, for the whole campus. Um, it's scheduled, uh, just as a, for, your, for your knowledge, uh, right now the council is scheduled to vote on this on February the 5th. It's just a resolution. It's a resolution authorizing the expenditure of funds. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've heard no opposition, so we're pretty, you know, optimistic that the council will see it. It's, it, it's as Mr. Elliott mentioned earlier, it's, it's mixed in with a number of projects. So it's not, it's not a standalone vote on just this project, but we proposed uh, an, uh, about $110 million worth of projects 
uh, citywide, ranging from stormwater projects to uh, the funding for the new Lentz Public Health Center, and this is part of that. Uh, it's, it's you know seven million of the 110 million that were that were being proposed to the council, and so uh, uh, we think that there's a, a lot of support for it, and we're pretty optimistic that the council will vote on February 5th. And I think just going forward, what you'd see is that at your monthly meeting, we'd give you an update every month of where we are, kind of what it looks like, where we're going. Uh, we're still we hadn't figured figured out all the details about how we're going to do this in order to fast track it. We're kind of a couple different ideas because we want to make sure we move it along pretty quickly because we don't want it to drag. It'd be hard to be doing this work when hockey season especially starts and so there's a lot of needs to, to make this thing move fast so we're thinking about different ways to, to, to fast track the construction side of it all of which will uh, will come back and present to you at, at subsequent meetings once populist sort of figure fi, uh, finishes its design drawings and then we start thinking about the uh, construction managing process and how we're going to go forward so I think it's you know uh, again I think this sort of completes what I think has been a pretty good year uh, for facilities for our for the sports authority facilities I think they're as I said, they're teenagers now, and so we need to spend a little money on them. Uh, and uh, maybe if you spend a little money on them, you get good results back. And I think we're pretty pleased with, 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 what, with how the money was spent at the stadium. I think the Titans did an excellent job in terms of managing that process and getting us a lot of, a lot of good for the money we invested. Uh, and I think with what we're going to do um, with, here in the building, uh, the same holds, holds speak. So uh, we're, we're uh, optimistic, happy about it. Uh, I hope you uh, share it. Obviously, any questions, happy to answer, but obviously more details to come on the on the specifics as we get into the drawing so thank you any questions from any yeah, uh, yeah. first comment I, I think this is great uh, this is wonderful I, I, applaud the vision and effort. I guess the question I have is what is our role as a sports authority board in this the process seemed was like it had already started yeah when, once we became aware of it so I'm a little well, I think the, the role will be to, to approve the plans as finally. I mean, you're going to sign off on the plans and, and, and the process going forward. Uh, for, because of council deadlines, uh, we, we had to file stuff before we could we could get anything before the sports started. I know, I know I know we reached out to Mr. Elliott as chair. He was out of town, so we had a little miscommunication there. I apologize for that. But we're simply council filing deadlines that required us to get something in the hopper in order to get the thing moving quickly. Otherwise, we'd have to wait until later in February or March, and then you start missing out on a couple a week period. So I, I, you're, you're right. I apologize. Not apologize. Well, I do apologize because it's always better to talk about it from the front end. Uh, but going forward, you're going to, I mean, you guys like to do on all the approvals, all the capital budgets that are going to be spent by the other processes we put in place you have to sign off on those and those will come back to you for approval at your subsequent meeting so you're going to the final plans are really in your hands to sign off on okay thank you are there other questions okay, okay. Great. Nope. Great. yeah thank you all appreciate it thank you rich okay as our interim director miss Falkinson has done a great job of keeping us informed and working on things and uh, you're going to see here as she gives her report today, and so our executive director's report. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you can look and you'll find everything that I'm going to discuss is in the staff analysis, but the first thing that I wanted to bring to you this morning um, deals with a run that you may have heard about. On December 22nd, there was a marathon. The 26 for 26 was the title, and it was to honor the victims of the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting. Um, initially, this was one person who wanted to get 26 friends together and run through the streets of East Nashville. No street closures were planned, and it just blew up on social media. And before they knew it, literally, and I think about 36 hours, they had about 1,000 people that had signed up. So at that point, Public Works and the police department said, we, we got to do something because we do not want a public safety issue. So they suggested that the event be moved to LP Field. The event was December 22nd. Um, I was contacted about it on the evening, <clears throat> excuse me, of December 20th, and then received paperwork and insurance on the 21st, and we were working together trying to get everything um, turned in and submitted, and had conversations with Margaret and JD and uh, Dr. Kim and um, the Titans and so many different metro agencies just trying to see how can we do this because it really garnered a lot of media attention and just a lot of attention in general, understandably, in a relatively short amount of time. So we were able to get all the documents that we needed. 
um, we did go ahead and um, grant a waiver. And under our, our civic event policy, the executive director does not have the authority to grant a waiver for an organization that is not a 501c3 without board approval. And I contacted JD. And just because of the special circumstances, he agreed that that was um, appropriate. First of all, we just, from a PR standpoint, did not want it to look like the sports authority was profiting off of the tragedy in Connecticut. And then from a practical standpoint, um, I talked to our parking manager and he was scheduled to be out of state working on a project and was concerned that he, it might be difficult for him to find the staff that he needed to collect money and work the event since it was such late notice and it was also Christmas weekend. So we felt like a, a waiver was appropriate under the circumstances. And so now I'm just coming to you this morning asking you, seeking ratification basically, asking that you all would ratify the decision to waive parking for that event. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Chair? Yes. Do we have someone from the organization that can just give us an update on success? No, well, no one is here, but I did contact them. They said that the, the run went better than they could have imagined. They did have over 1,000 runners. They raised about $30,000. Um, they now have started a 26 for 26 foundation, and so they're just trying to do some things to help victims of school shootings and their families all over the country. So that was success then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> On a very short planning time. <laughs> uh, moving along, um, back in, I believe it was November, we were contacted by Cross Point Church. Um, they are in the process of moving their main campus to um, the formal Rexel Electric Building on Cowan Street. And so they are interested in, in entering into an agreement with the Sports Authority to use Lot E on Sundays from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. for overflow parking. Um, they would like to begin this spring. I think Easter is their target date. So basically the church members, visitors would park in lot E. Um, like I said, this is overflow because they do have some parking on site and then they would be shuttled to their new facility. And the church will provide maintenance, insurance, and, and patrol the area during the requested hours. Um, Brasher Burbank and Margaret Darby and I met with Jenny Catron, their executive director, who was, who was here this morning and, um, and just had a preliminary discussion with them and, and the church is aware that should the sports authority agree to enter into an agreement that, um, that obviously tightens game days, CMA Sunday, there are just some Sundays where we could not, uh, it just would not work. So they are, they're fine with that, and they're just looking to see what um, alternative plan they would come up with. Um, we are in the process of working through parking rates and have had some, some good discussions, and Margaret has had several discussions with Bond Council um, as to what we would be able to charge, and we've been looking at a discounted rate, um, but there's also a private payment maximum or cap um, that basically says that I think more than 10% of revenue from the bonds cannot be derived from private entities. Is that the best way to? Essentially. Yes. Essentially. 10% of, uh, we, we can't have more than 10% private payments being diverted for um, the purpose of charging the bonds. So we're um, taking that into consideration. We are working with legal and bond counsel, um, the church, and Stuart Parking to determine an appropriate rate. So Jenny, would you like to come up here? I don't know if you have any comments or if the board has any questions for the church, but basically I'm just asking that you all would just approve our continued discussions aimed at entering into an agreement and um, should we be able to work out an agreement and the, the rate structure is what it needs to be, then we will, we will bring that to the board along with a draft agreement and proceed from there. Does anyone have any questions regarding what Monica has presented to us? Yeah. Go ahead. Helen? Uh, how, does, how does Stewart Transportation figure into this? Are they consulted or are they not a part of this at all since they're they have been. They've been involved in all of our discussions. They've spoken with the church since they, they manage the lot 
So they've been actively involved so in this whole. So they have signed off on this? Yes. They're okay with this? Yeah, well, we're still working through it. Brasher is, is here. Do you want if you have any comments? Okay. I think it's a good thing. It's a great experience for the city and a great location. And we're happy to have the space that's usually on a low demanding day, you know, on a non-event day, so it's a great fit. It's an opportunity to generate some revenue when it's not typically being generated at that time. Okay, other questions? One, there's a large event that comes in that's not I guess I don't know what the pre-scheduled events means, uh, and you guys will probably work that out in the details, but the question is if there's a large event that has potential to come to Nashville and it does include a Sunday, uh, would this preclude us from bidding on that event? I guess is the question. No, and that's one of the things that we mentioned in our preliminary meeting is that just because the downtown is growing, the number of events being brought to LP Field are increasing, all of the time and so you know in our conversations with Jenny we said there are just going to be some Sundays that we can't even anticipate at this point but an event is going to come and it may mean that you all are not able to use the lot on that particular day are you all okay with that and they have said that they we have um, and thank you all just for the opportunity for the conversation and Monica has been amazing to just open up the conversation and see if the possibilities exist but um, we have parking on site that meets our code specification for our building. Uh, but we also have a very young population where a good majority of them are driving as individuals on site instead of families of four or five per car. We actually tend to have a lot more people who are just driving on their own when they come on Sundays. And so we're just trying to make sure we plan well. We've worked out agreements with all of our immediate neighbors. And so all of our immediate neighbors are working with us for overflow parking. So we see this as really just another like precautionary step to make sure we have a, another backup plan on really big Sundays for us, like an Easter or something like that. And so um, obviously being sensitive to the priorities for you guys, I think we would work well with you all to make sure that your priorities get first and then, you know, that it's, that it's an option for us on those days when it's not necessary for y'all. Are there any other questions? Question. Question, right? Just want to try and understand the funding. We're going to, I mean, this, this all sounds fine to me. We're always, we're negotiating now is how much to charge for the parking privileges. That's correct. And, and, this, and the amount that we can get is going to be capped because of bond considerations, right? Potentially, yes. So we, we kind of know where this is going to come out, don't we? Right. So as, as far as a, uh, to give you an idea of what we're looking at in terms of parking, um, Bond Council, Metro Legal has advised that the Sports Authority should not receive more than $25,000 per year um, from parking to remain under um, that private revenue cap. So we're looking somewhere along the lines of maybe $1.75 per space. Um, but like I said, we're, str we're trying to finalize that and then we'll bring a, a definitive figure back to the board. Well, uh, my thought is simply since we know what, what the cap would be, that we're pretty much in a position to approve this and, and leave the, the detailed negotiation to Margaret, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to Monica, assuming that we stay under the cap, which we, which we need to, right? I mean, there, there'd be no need to, to punt the decision if we're comfortable with that, with it. I wouldn't think so. Emmett, did you have a question? No, I, I just wanted to agree, and if there was a motion to be made, I would make it at this time. Okay. I'll second Mr. Wynn's motion. Any other questions or comments? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much Thank for you. being here. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Um, moving right along, the, the downtown partnership, we're going to get an update from Russell Payne. Um, the, our contract with the downtown partnership has expired. Um, you received a memo from me regarding that, um, I think the first week in January, and all of the details and the background information. So, um, so Russell right will come on up and he'll give an update. Um, we are recommending that you renew the contract under the, the terms 
have not changed. Um, it's the same as it has been, and Russell can answer any questions. I'm happy to answer them as well. Welcome, Russell. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. It's good to see most of you. Some of you are new faces, and I'm a new face to some of you. So uh, I'm Russell Payne, Vice President of Nashville Downtown Partnership. Uh, I'm responsible for all the operations, uh, and the piece of the puzzle that I'm here to talk to you today about is uh, our shuttle operations and our parking management program that we've had in existence since uh, 2002 uh, at LP Field. Uh, simply put, the uh, goal is to provide user-friendly, affordable parking options for the downtown employees. Uh, Lot A has, for the past 10 years, uh, been an underutilized asset. We allow people to park there for free. They can walk into the downtown area, or they can use an optional $25 shuttle service. Uh, in 2010, uh, when we had some parking shortages, uh, we opened up what we call BEEP out of Lot R, which is Best Ever Event Parking. And what that does is that allows people to park at Lot R for free, use the pedestrian bridge to walk into downtown and or hop on an optional shuttle service that we provide as well. Uh, that went over extremely well. I believe you can see in your notes, uh, as of December 31st, almost 39,000 people, uh, cars rather, have parked uh, at Lot R for about 291 Bridgestone events. And uh, that equated to about, when we count these people as they come in, about 70,000 people have utilized that service. So that is a boon to the people of Nashville, boon to holding down parking prices and uh, allowing people to come and enjoy Bridgestone event arenas a little bit more. Uh, about 66% of those 77,000 or 70,000 people chose to do the shuttle service. Uh, again, we've been in existence for 10 years. Uh, I think we've got wonderful working relationships with the Sports Authority, uh, Titans, and uh, we're here just to request renewal of the contract for the same terms. It's a three-year term with uh, two one-year renewal options. And I'll take any questions. Okay, we've had that uh, to the members. Do you have any questions or any? Russell, while he's here, do I hear a motion regarding renewal? So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very time. much. Yeah, bro. Monica, we're back to you. Solar charging stations. Solar charging stations. I mentioned this at the December meeting, but on December the 5th, I received a letter from Oak Ridge National Laboratory notifying the Sports Authority um, that the solar electric vehicle charging stations that were installed at LP Field um, are designed, their functioning is designed, they're ready to be turned over to the Sports Authority, and so the Sports Authority needs to accept operational responsibility for the charging stations. That was part of the license agreement that we entered into with UT Battelle that said that we would, or the Sports Authority would accept operational responsibility once we received notice that the chargers were up and running and functioning as designed. Um, I sent the letter from Metro Legal to Metro Legal just to review further, um, but the Sports Authority is obligated to take over responsibility and um, the operational operation, maintenance, and repair of the charging stations. Basically, we just we need to go ahead and, and accept that responsibility. I don't know if there are any questions. Um, one thing I do want to mention, and I've gotten a couple questions on, is what what are we looking at um, cost-wise as far as the maintenance and the repairs? Um, we've had several discussions with with Oak Ridge and with UT Battelle, and you know it's it's a new project, so everyone's trying to figure out exactly what this looks like, and so there's not a, a concrete number. But based on um, my projections with or my projections and my conversations with Oak Ridge and also with Brasher, we're thinking that it's going to be somewhere between $500 and $1,000 per month. Um, the program, and we're going to talk about this in a second, but the program is scheduled to end sometime between um, September 30th of this year at the earliest and March 14th of 2014 at the latest. At that point, when the project ends, then the Sports Authority will um, 
take control as far as ownership and the title will be transferred to us. And then we have some options. Um, at this point in time, the chargers are not fee-based. I think we talked about this also at the meeting last month, so it's free. Um, the Sports Authority would have the opportunity to decide whether or not the charger should remain non-fee-based or if we do want to charge and um, Ecotality would also receive a fee along with that. And so that's some of the work that we're starting to do now, looking at pro post, pro pro excuse me, post project. What is our responsibility? What are our options um, as far as generating some revenue? But until the project ends, we are not generating revenue from the machines. Um, so, most likely any maintenance costs, any repair costs, and all of those are expected to be, like I said, minimal, um, will need to be, they'll be paid for um, from Stewart because they operate and manage the lot, and then we would reimburse Stewart from our monthly reconciliation report, which is exactly what we're doing right now for our Comcast um, and some of our small operational expenses. So Monica, we've already agreed to we've already agreed to this program. What right. you're asking for today is that we say yes, we will take possession of them because they're working. Right. Not possession, but we Responsible manage responsibility, responsibility because they are working. That's Has correct. someone confirmed that they are there and, and working? They are. They are there okay. and they are working. And I move for approval. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Approved. The other thing, and I just mentioned this, is um, when we entered into the agreement, the project was scheduled to end the end of March 2013. Um, they extended the project through September of this year, and now they need to extend the license um, agreement. When you, when you said extended it, that's just for data collection? Is that right? it's, it is. It's mostly for, for data collection, and, um, and they're waiting for some contributions, financial contributions that were designated towards infrastructure to, to come in. So at the, at the latest, the project is uh, scheduled to end March 14, 2014, and so they're asking that the license agreement be extended through that date, and so um, we're asking the board to approve that extension with our contract for UT Patel. I make a motion for approval. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Approved. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Do any of you have any questions of Monica on any matter right now before we move to the next item on the agenda? Very good report and very thoroughly presented to us. Thank you very much. It's a lot of information. So yeah. Mm -hmm. well, thank you communicating. Well. Jenny, I just like to thank her for how when she gets it to us and allows right. us to review yeah. it and gives very us plenty helpful. of time. Very helpful. And then her follow-up when she finds out information after she's yeah. given us information to in her report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank your you. staff analysis is extremely detailed and professional. We really appreciate it. We appreciate Thank you. you. Stay up here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next item on our agenda is to uh, the arena fiscal year 14 operating budget. In December, we were presented the budget, uh, and we haven't acted on it or anything, but there is a requirement that this be done, as you see in the analysis there. On, uh, and then under behind tab eight is the budget if you need to make reference to it here today. But are there any questions about this budget which you've had, which was presented to you? If not, we need to formally approve this uh, budget today. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Then it is approved. And now, you, if you noticed, uh, both Sean and Jeff are smiling uh, for a change. Uh, wonder why. Wonder why. <laughs> 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 uh, but Sean, we're, we're excited about what's happened with the Predators, and, and I know you all are more excited 
and the activity is great down here in the last few days, right? Uh, it's good to be liked again. Yeah. You know, I told someone earlier, I used to have a boat and a pickup truck, and I sold them both the same week, and I lost every friend I had. <laughs> I didn't know what that was like again until we had the lockout, and people used to talk to me, used to smile at me, and I was shunned for the past five months or so. So it's good to be back. And um, you know, that's why I wrote in, I think when I was doing the report for Monica to pass out, I think it was the day we announced the deal, right, that uh, we had to move back. My original one was a little bit more inflamed than this one. Michelle asked me to take it down a little bit. But uh, we're obviously very excited about it, as the whole community should be. Uh, but since I wrote this, we've actually played three games. And we've had a good feel for what the response has been from our fans and the community. And we're pretty excited where we're sitting right now. We don't take it for granted what our fans have done for us, our season ticket holders, our partners. Uh, they stayed with us in better fashion than uh, you could ever imagine. I mean, the response has been incredible. Um, we're very aggressive all the time about what we're going to achieve. We set very aggressive goals, and then we work hard to, to hit them. Um, Jeff announced to our staff that we're going to sell out 24 games this year. We have 24 games at home. Last year we sold out 25, so it's the first time we're willing to slide backwards. And everyone said, oh my gosh, how are we going to do this? We're coming out of a lockout. Well, we sold out opening night earlier than we ever sold out a game before in franchise history, which is incredible. Um, we thought we'd have to work a lot harder to get it there, get a little bit more creative. But the pent-up demand is absolutely incredible. But then you have a Monday afternoon game, you know, 5 o'clock game, special time uh, for Martin Luther King Day. And we said, uh oh, what are we going to have on that day? We sold that game out. It was absolutely incredible. And uh, where we're sitting right now, you look at our TV ratings over the past three games I've had, two home games, one away game. And uh, we're about double where we were last year. And when you think about that, three years ago or so, we were doing 0 0.2, 0 0.4 ratings, give or take, in our market. The last three games were averaging about a 0.2 to a 0.6 in Memphis and Knoxville, where three years ago we weren't registering any ratings. For our own, we peaked at about a three or so. So it's, it's very encouraging where we're sitting. Every measurement that you could lay out there, they're working together. So we're very encouraged, very thankful you know, for the support that you all gave and everyone in the community. It's good to be back, not just so people smile at you again at, at school and Little League, but more importantly, <laughs> We're doing what we're supposed to be doing in this building. And as I said, when you overlay the 24 games that we're you know, putting in this season, adding a few games of what we would have had played on top of a schedule that we've never had before from an event standpoint for this fiscal year, it's going to be a very, very, very good year. Again, we're enjoying the best event year we've ever had. Last year was the best we ever had. The year before was the best we ever had. So we're really on a very, very <laughs> nice path. And again, igniting it with hockey, ideally an elongated playoff run which the seventh game of the Stanley Cup is scheduled for June 28th. Wow. So, uh, you know, plan on coming in here with shorts, carrying your sweats and putting them on <laughs> because uh, some of the things I'll talk about in a minute with renovations, the building's going to be cold playing hockey at that time period. But uh, as far as the month of November goes that we're reviewing today, it was a very good month. It's always tough for us from an event scheduling standpoint because good and bad of the CMAs. It's the best event you could do because um, we end up doing the CMA Awards live to an international audience. I think it's replayed two or three times at a later date. And then we also tape the CMA Christmas show, which again is shown at least twice, I think, to an international audience. But it also takes up a lot of dates, as we know. I think we've blocked the building for about 18 dates, or days, you know, for that production to occur. But we're very fortunate to have it. Um, only have one other event that month because of the canceled games that we experienced. But again, we're pacing very well, uh, lagging a little bit behind our original forecast for revenue year to date through November. Most of that due to the loss of games. I feel very confident with what we have on the books right now and what we're going to announce. We're not just going to catch up to that, we're going to far surpass it. As much as our revenue is slightly lagging behind, our expenses are far outpacing from a savings standpoint, where we originally thought as well, and the bottom line results are, are far better than we thought and they're going to continue to grow. So we're, we're really excited. Again, from an event standpoint, you know, starting in December, which was the busiest December we've ever had. Um, I think it was our third busiest month we've ever enjoyed as well from an event standpoint. And when you look at the spectrum of events we've done, it's, it's pretty exciting. We always said, you know, the building in the past was booked. Whoever decided to come, they came. It was somewhat passive to a degree. Then the new incentives were put in place in 07 and also woke everyone up, said, okay, how do we attack this a little bit differently? Since then, I think we've honed it a little bit more. You have a new layer of incentives that were put in place this past July. Some of our guarantee money went away. So it was even more incentive for us, you know, to get out there. And you'll see results like December happening more often and more often. 
but you look at it, we had The Who, the Grammy nominations for the first time, Aerosmith, Toby Mack, two basketball games on two different days with MTSU hosting Vanderbilt, uh, Western Kentucky hosting uh, Louisville, two Trans-Siberian Orchestra shows, ended the year with uh, Bass Nectar on, on um, I was going to say Halloween, it seemed like Halloween, on uh, New Year's Eve, uh, that was sold out. So we had a lot of sold out events, a lot of first time plays in our building, which is tremendous. And then the new year, is we're just going to roll what we have announced already, uh, or maybe we've already had, two Monster Jam shows, Monster Trucks, if you will. One sold out, the other practically sold out. Sold out Justin Bieber show, seven shows of Ringling Brothers moving in right now. The past three years, we've grown our Ringling attendance by about 14, 15%. We're looking to do the same this year, which again, is almost defying logic. But it doesn't when you factor in where we were and how we're selling things now as one staff, one unit. When we had the lockout again, I think I told you all we're going to be a better organization when it's over because of what we're almost forced to do by keeping all of our employees on. And that's bringing everyone together to make every event special. And we're seeing the benefits of it, especially in some of our family shows. We've got Shine, Dine, Shine Down, Winter Jam, uh, Raw, uh, WWE, Kid Rock, Pink, Bon Jovi, Lady Gaga, the SEC Tournament which is um, five nights and seven events crammed in there, 13 basketball games. Eric Clapton, Maroon 5, Elton John, Black Keys, Avery Brothers, One Direction. I'm going to go on and on and on. What else? We're going to have about five major announcements in the next few weeks. The first one was yesterday when we announced uh, the Rush show coming back. That'll sell out. So it's not just that we're announcing all these great shows. We're selling them out. And we're doing bigger grosses than other buildings. The important part about that, as I've always talked about, you keep building that wheel bigger and bigger, and you're showing more and more people that are looking at Nashville saying, you know, what's happening there? You know, I think we're the second smallest market in NHL, yet we're outpacing every NHL building um, that's out there for shows, you know, show to show, and that's pretty encouraging, and people are noticing it. Also included um, in your packet, basically a graph uh, charting us against other buildings that we really compare ourselves to. Not because of market size, because of the region. We look at the southeast region, because that's the important part. There are certain shows, for whatever reason, that are doing a northern tour, or they're going to do a, a west tour. So it's important when we're tracking against the southeast buildings, what are those buildings getting that we're not, and how do we alter that? Once we crack that, and you start outperforming all of those buildings, then you can start saying, okay, how do we lure some of those tours that for whatever reason are not hitting the southeast and bring them down here? The important part about this graph, I think though, is we captured it in over a nine year period of time, roughly. Three years prior to the new lease being signed, the first three years of the lease being signed in 07, and then the last three years, factoring in, you know, not so much the new deal because it really hasn't hit effect of how we're booking things, but it's staggering when you look at where we were prior to that new lease that was done. You know, back then we were over that three year period of time, we averaged as a 36th busiest building in America. The first three years coming out of the new lease, where you're just starting to put it into play and figure out how to alter your business philosophy and structure. And we were the 26th busiest building in America. The past three years, we're a top 10 building. We're the ninth busiest yeah, building in America. And when I met you all uh, two and a half years ago in my first meeting, when it wasn't that pleasant, to be honest because we owed you so many reports and you should have beat up on us. I think Jeff said, uh, we're going to be the busiest building in America. And he probably laughed and he said, well, just get us our reports on time. Make sure the building's clean. And, you know, don't be so arrogant. That was him speaking. Out. And but we said, we were serious. This is what we're going to do. And if you remember, and really for my own enjoyment or amusement, at the end of every monthly letter I write, I always talk about us being service and revenue animals. I've written about 30 of these now. I'm waiting for someone to say, you just copy and paste that? Well, the answer is yes, I do. But the reason is, that is what we're trying to build. That's what we've become. We still have some work to do because until we're the busiest building in America, we have some work to do. The only building in this region that does a little bit better than we do right now is Atlanta. Atlanta. And you know they continue to do very well. But you look at the other buildings in the region, it's easy to say, well, every Southern building is doing better now. The markets are better. The economy didn't hit them as hard, blah, blah, blah. But look at it. It's not the case. You have other buildings going backwards. Yep. You have some stepping forward for different reasons. But we're the, really the one building in there that's taking these huge, huge steps. So I want to thank you for doing what you did in 07 and then again what you did this summer because those incentives will allow us to continue to drive this. And it's pretty exciting you know, for all of us. you have any questions at all about the report or finances, what we did for uh, November year to date?
Okay. Very and thorough my you, last comment. So. You say that other people are noticing that this board notices too what you're doing in the arena and all the activity that you're doing for our community. And I just want to thank you, Sean. That's great. I appreciate thank it. You. It's a big team effort. So uh, I'd like to give you an update on our capital improvements. <laughs> Again, back, I guess it was in the July meeting or June meeting, I'm not sure when, we had Adam Stover from Populous, as I referred to earlier, basically go through a programming opportunity with our building. Looked at it without a budget, you know, what would you do with this building without a time frame? Well, here are the projects that you'd want to take on. And, and I think what he drew up was probably $120, $150 million worth of projects. Obviously, not going to do all of those, but it was basically if you did everything conceivable, you know, these are some of the things that you should look at. The theme, though, was how do you bring new personality, new life to tired areas or old areas? And most importantly, how do you utilize areas that you're not utilizing now for the highest and best use? And that's what we're starting to do now. When we put together the SIF program or Capital Improvement Fund, um, really put us on a path to start knocking down some of the projects that you have approved over the past four or five, six years that weren't funded. And more importantly, how do we take on some new projects and what should they be? Uh, one of the first things we were doing were, I always call them the uh, environmental renovations, basically reworking our HVAC systems, installing a dehumidification system, reworking our lighting grid, our lighting controls, our control panels, some of our plumbing systems, for a lot of reasons. First and foremost, the most important is so we can put our team on a consistent sheet of ice and put our fans in a more comfortable environment without renting equipment all the time. We're achieving that right now. The responsible part of it is we're gonna be able to cut our energy use down in a dramatic fashion and just be better stewards of, of um, what we're utilizing. We're about halfway, maybe a little bit better than halfway through those renovations right now. If you remember, we started these, I think in September, we had uh, SSR come a few times. Um, it really is a 12 month project that we put them on a nine month schedule that we have to do. We have to work around our events push forward and it's pretty exciting. Some of the plumbing work is done already uh, from the HVAC work or dehumidification work. Um, they're installing the south side of our building right now. That'll be online in about two weeks. Once that's online, they move to the north end of the building. They start working on those quads. And by the time the playoffs start, normally when we're renting equipment and taking up the entire garage rooftop in temporary equipment, that works at about 50% capacity because it's in the elements, we're gonna be up and running and operational. Uh, right now, they just started the phasing of our lighting project. The first phase is putting new control panels in the building where we can zone the entire building, both in air conditioning and heating, but also in lighting grid. Uh, that's scheduled to be done in the next few weeks. The second phase of that is literally replacing most of our fixtures and how spaces are utilized. So it's, it's pretty exciting. That's going along very well. Um, what I wanted to visit on is a few projects that you've already approved in the past. we we'll talk about them right now and over the next few months, like to start looking at these projects, you know, bidding them out again, because some of them are fairly dated, but it, it's time now that we have some funds available and the lockout is over, um, that we should look at these. And really, I want to resurface them, see if you have any other questions. We'll probably start on, on some of these over the next few months. Most of these will happen after hockey's over, just from a timing standpoint. Some maybe we start prior to that. The first one, if you remember, about three or four years ago, you approved a phone system. Um, upgrade for about $300,000, $350,000. And I'm always going to give this goal number, and obviously we work to operate underneath that. As we get our bids, we'll come back and report to you, give you an update of where we are. Uh, two years ago, you approved it again. Uh, someone reminded me we don't have to approve these 50 times. Just do it when you have uh, the funds. And I think I was on the phone with one of the new board members when the phone system quit. I think it was you, Kim, um, about two years ago. And that still happens from time to time. This is a project we have to do for so many reasons. We've been very lucky to date that uh, our phone system hasn't failed yet during an on-sale. And if it fails during an on-sale, all these great numbers I keep talking about, we'll stop talking about them because then you become the building that, well, can't even do an on-sale. So we're gonna start pursuing that, You know, reopen up all the bids, look at them, see where we are. It'll probably end up being about $300,000, $325,000. Um, we're gonna continue to renovate some hospitality space but again, we're building a schedule around our, our event schedule. So that would include all of our suites. We've renovated about um, 16 or 18 of them already. Um, the idea is you're always in a state of renovation in areas. It's like painting a bridge. You never stop. Once you think you're done, you start back over again. But we want to schedule about 25 suites to get put in a grid to start knocking them down. Normally do them in two to four 
chunks at a time. That won't start though until probably May. We just continue to do that. We've allocated about $750,000 to the project. They're about $28,000 a suite. Um, again, a few years ago, we approved enhancements in our dressing rooms, you know, for our performers, our production rooms, our uh, performer manager rooms. Uh, Want to start on those again, probably in later spring, hopefully later than I'm anticipating because of a long playoff run. But some of these things we can start and work around our event schedules. It's about $150,000 of that $50,000 for the most part is FF&E. About $100,000 is structural and physical, moving some walls, combining one dressing room, for example, to make it a true star performer room, something we're really lacking. When you have an Elton John, when you have the rush, when you have the elite of the industry coming you know, to your building, you want to make sure you can put them in the same fashion they experience at Madison Square Garden and in Vegas and in Staples Center. Um, some base building improvements, about half a million dollars. They would include, again, all these projects have been approved in the past, but I want to resurface them. Um, reworking some of our guard rails and decking in the arena bowl, converting some of them to glass instead of the, the steel structures we have or, or uh, iron structures and cable to improve visibility, reduce the number of obstructed view seats that we have right now. We have about 400 limited view seats now because of this, so that'll change that, give us a larger manifest to sell to. Um, rework some of the decking, that is temporary decking, you know, it works in and around the boards when you take the stage out. Again, ideally picking up some seats but for the most part, we're doing it to have faster conversions and move things around. Um, about $150,000 plan to spend on intercals, as I call them. What those are, are temporary seating that expands and collapses right into the fascia of the building all the way around. Um, that's becoming a little bit unworkable. For example, when we did monster trucks, normally that should take 15 minutes to take them in and out. They're electric, you hold the motor down, they come. Well, instead, ours take about eight or nine hours to do because you manually need to do it. So we need to rework some of those mortars, replace them, and upgrade those, which allows for faster conversions. Um, do some flooring repairs and improvements. As you walk in the concourse today, you'll see the great terrazzo flooring that we have. There are some patches in there that have holes just through enhanced traffic, um, some weather stripping, some expansion um, grid joints that, that are popping. Alter those a little bit so it doesn't ruin all the improvements we're doing in the basement down below where water's coming on through. Um, continue to enhance our signage throughout the building, whether it be for floor seating or just bringing murals to life of who's performed here in the past. There was always been a signage approval virtually every year and nothing was ever done underneath that. I think the old approval was for five or $600,000. I think you know, we have a budget of about $100,000 and maybe you just do that every other year so you continue to bring life to the building. And then the last one that was approved a few years ago, and this will be more of a design work, probably working in conjunction with the south improvements of the building, but that's replacing the marquee out front. Um, it's, it's fun to see that we have Tan on playing in March. That's supposed to be Elton John, or that we have a game on Earth Day instead of Saturday. But it's one of those things that's virtually unrepairable right now. It's very dated. When it was installed, I think 15 years ago, it was somewhat dated. And the idea is that you go to live video that you have slides, very similar to the CBB's marquee across the street. We'll work on that. But again, that's one, even though it was approved in the past, I'd want to bring back forward and say, hey, this is what the design looks like. What's your ideas? Those are the things we want to get you involved in a little bit more, just like Rich was saying with the South. That should mirror some of the things that we're doing on that side. We talked about using this building as a conduit for a connection from the new campus to Broadway. This marquee can bring that personality and draw, if you will, as, as well. Um, the one newer item that, that I think it was approved in the past, but I, I'm not sure. I've tried to go back through the minutes and it's difficult, but um, replacing the carpeting in the building, in this room, in the hallway, on the club level, and on the suite level. I think in years past it was approved to do the club level and the meeting rooms, but not the suite level, because the suite level is the responsibility of the predators, not powers management. Obviously with the new SIP program, it brings all those things together, as we're already seeing with the hospitality space that we started in the summer. So that'll be the one new one that I'd like your approval on. That's about a half a million dollars. And again, those are rough bid numbers. Then we have to go back through the science of actually bidding it, you build the decor with it. But that's the one that I would like to see new approval on. So we're gonna start moving forward and getting bids and looking at the schedule upon it. So those are our capital improvements that I uh, wanna start doing you know, between now and I don't know, next six months or so. But again, the approval that I would need is, is that last carpeting, I believe. If you have any okay. questions about what any, our plans are or where we're sitting, it's great to talk to you. Any questions, anyone? Do you do we need to
approved then today, you think, for the carpet for the suites? Yeah, I think that's the one that needs approval. The others are more revisiting of things that are approved okay. in the past. Um, this will be the first time we're really going into it, so we're setting the procedures now. I met with Bob Lackey last week to just walk through what we should do and things that have been approved in the past. We don't need approval again, but if you want to give it, you okay. can. But we'll, the way we see this working is when we identify a project or a scope of projects, we come forward and say we want to build X, whatever X may be. The rough budget's going to be $100,000. You'll approve it or ask questions or ask to tweak, whatever it may be. And we'll go through that and then I'll give you updates on how we did it, who's doing it, why they're doing it, and where we are. Okay. What number is the figure that you're talking about? In this collection, the total number is $2.75 million. What do you look at? About a half million for the uh, the car. For the car. Okay. Are you looking at a document? No, I'm looking at my own notes. Oh. <laughs> Motion made to, is there a second? Second. Discussion? I'm not sure I understand what we're being asked to vote for mm -hmm. and what he's going to come okay. back and tell us later. So can we, can someone it's clarify just, that for me? Just to approve the carpet. As a new All project. All the other projects we earlier approved. Already approved. All right, are we approving the cost? Or are we just giving you the go ahead to start looking at I the I think property? you're approving the project with yeah. the scope price of being approximately half a million dollars. Yeah. And then what are you bringing back? I think what I'll bring back, you approve it, we start moving forward, we get bids, it's going to come in at $400,000, or it came in at $540,000, this is why you need to reapprove that, and this is what we're looking to do. So what we don't want is 12 interior decorators, <laughs> but I do want to bring everyone to me, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, this is what works, to answer more questions, and then I'll the schedule a little bit more. So we're approving the project knowing the cost would be somewhere around mm -hmm. a half a million, and you will come back to us with right. approval for the exact amount. Is that no. right? No. Or as long as it's in a half a million, then that's That's, that's the way we see it, how the document works, that's how we worked out with Bob Lackey. Okay. But again, we're pretty approachable when people want to find out what we're doing and why we're doing it. We're having meetings, I think, every month again. So we can answer any questions you have. Okay. Okay, are there other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? One abstention. Right. Okay. One is to, okay, the motion has been approved. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions we have a shown? I'm seven. Expect to see everyone there. I, I just had one question. Did you did you talk to Monica about this before you brought the the carpet? We talked about the any? carpet project? Right. No. We talked about capital projects coming before the board. I just really want to make sure that you able you tell her so that it's part of the right. staff Go packet ahead. so that we don't have a situation where right. she's not informed about uh, no, something you're asking. I, I think it's on the agenda because it says arena right. renovations, right. but mm -hmm. I'm not but sure the details that when mm -hmm. you're asking for specific money, I want to okay. make sure that it's on our Okay. Good. I'll do that. Thank you. Right. Thanks. Okay. We'll move to the next report. Uh, Walter, are you still out there? I'm still here. <laughs> Walter, we're glad to see you always. Mr. Chairman, this is a Just don't ask second. Don't <laughs> I may. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Chairman, fellow board members, Margaret, Monica. I promise you I will not be long. I'll be rather brief. Uh, but I do want to uh, kind of recap what, uh, what it, what's occurring at the LP field and what will occur. Uh, I assume that each of you have received a, a packet from from the Titans? Yes. Okay. All right. Since our last uh, meeting, uh, we've had two football games, uh, which we ended on a very positive note, uh, beating the Jaguars, uh, which otherwise has been a rather disappointing season. Uh, however, I believe that uh, everybody within the Titans organization is working hard uh, to make sure that, uh, that everything is improved uh, during this year of 13. Um, I do, uh, I am excited about the fact that we did have the Music City Bowl there, very successful Music City Bowl. Uh, my beloved Commodores was victorious. Uh, ended up uh, being in the top 25 uh, 
uh, in, the, in the football ranking. So um, I'm very excited about that. And certainly, uh, I think uh, the uh, uh, Coach Franklin has certainly captured the imagination of every uh, uh, citizen, uh, not only in, in Nashville, but uh, throughout the state and surrounding states. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I do want to announce that uh, on February the 13th, uh, the Olympic gold medal United States women's soccer team will be uh, playing at the uh, at LP Field. Uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with Hope and Abby, all the big name uh, women that will be here uh, that have been a part of it. Uh, we are doing a little weather dance and prayer to make sure that the weather is is uh, is, is fair you know, and and hoping that uh, everything will go well. Tickets are moving. Uh, we're expecting uh, to have hopefully somewhere around the, the 15,000 range, uh, which will certainly be a plus. We've had soccer matches uh, uh, every year since I've been a part of the, uh, of the stadium. So it's something that we look forward to doing each and every year. Yes. Yes. It's uh, United States soccer team and uh, versus Scotland. Okay, this is going to be one match. One match. Okay. Is there any advertisement about it? Because oh, yes. it always comes around. You know, we're scrambling to get tickets, but mm -hmm. I don't see a lot of advertisement. There's, there's been an advertisement of uh, uh, television, radio, uh, newspaper. Mm -hmm. Have, mm -hmm. Have y'all heard? I've seen. It. Okay. Yeah, it's been advertised. Uh, well, maybe that's the problem. I don't listen to sports radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, it will, we'll kick off at 7. Our parking lot will, uh, will open approximately around 5 and the gates somewhere around 5.30 or 6 o'clock. So we're looking forward to a, a big time event. Um, also, as you look at our calendar that we always provide a yearly calendar, uh, in May, uh, May 4th, we are uh, looking forward to our second annual Mayor's Field Day, uh, which was uh, quite successful, uh, the first event that we had there. We're looking forward to having it uh, uh, be even larger uh, and have a lot more uh, participants that, uh, that will be at LP Field. Moving right along with uh, our casually uh, lost uh, on tab two, uh, that has always, we're in the works of uh, trying to resolve that. Uh, uh, it is, uh, is that a, around uh, just slightly more than $7,000, uh, which we are in discussions with um, Metro Insurance to uh, make sure that everything is in line so that we can be reimbursed for that. Tab three is our, tacket, is our ticket user fee fund, which is, shows the grand total of collections since uh, the uh, ticket tax was uh, implemented. Tab four is our capital fund, uh, which, uh, which you will see a detailed analysis of all of the capital funds uh, throughout the time that we've had it. Uh, tab five is our unfiled reimbursement request, uh, which uh, we have Discuss, had discussions with, uh, with Margaret and Monica and, and Bob Black, and we have set a date so uh, that we can uh, start discussing what uh, reimbursements uh, that, that will be uh, made back to the Titans. Our last tab is tab six, which shows our, uh, what projects that we have uh, going on in the stadium. Uh, we'd like to show you that so that you will always be informed with uh, what we're doing, what we're working on, what has been completed, uh, so that uh, you will know uh, and, and uh, be informed. Okay. So y'all will be brief. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? Let me ask you a question. Uh, yes, sir. How did you make out between the Music City Bowl game and your Tigers game on the field, I mean, did you have any problems 
with that game being the day before? Uh, no, actually, uh, Coach, we had we resought it uh, uh, in between the numbers uh, sometime in, in the middle of November, which really helped uh, uh, the field play well. I, I think Coach Franklin had alluded to uh, that he thought that you know the field would be sort of dirt or or sort of like the Redskins field as you saw in that, in that uh, playoff game. But it wasn't like that. It played very well. I think everybody was pleased with how it played. Uh, we, we've done this before in terms of having back-to-back -back games, especially with TSU and the Titans. So uh, this was a, a very good uh, playing service that we were able to uh, have. Other questions of Walter? Thank, thank you very much, and thank, thank you. you for getting your report to us thank ahead you, of time so we could review it. Our bylaws state that uh, each January we elect the officers for one-year terms, uh, and so this being our first meeting of the new year in January, it is uh, appropriate to uh, elect officers, and I guess I just open the floor then for nominations for chair for uh, 2013. Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to nominate you for another term if you'd like one. Okay, well, you want to conduct that? Go ahead and... Uh, further nominations for chair. <coughs> Hearing none. I'd like to make a suggestion that we just keep our same format of chairman, vice chairman, and and uh, Secretary or Treasurer, or what is it? Is it the Secretary? Secretary Treasurer. Secretary Treasurer, yeah. Just yes, uh, make one uh, motion. Well, thank you, Coach, but uh, be, I, I'm going to pass on the opportunity to seek another term as Vice Chairman simply because I've taken on some additional responsibilities with my change of job. Right. So I will. Uh, uh, I'll accept that. I, I would, <laughs> but uh, but I, I'm grateful for, for the sentiment okay. and, and for the support. And he assures me he'll be active on our All right. authority. I, indeed, I, I plan to remain a member if you'd like me to continue to be active, particularly on capital improvements of both LP Field and Bridgestone. I'm happy to do that, but I think this is a good time to dial it back just a bit so I can pay attention to my day job. But having said that, uh, the, the motion on the floor is that we re-elect uh, our chairman yeah. to another term. Good. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, the, the chair is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. And, uh, I have enjoyed serving, and, and only because of the good work that our staff does and the board does. And uh, we had a kind of a tough year with uh, uh, Emmett's untimely death and having to go through that process for a period of time. But with your suggestions and with the materials that we're getting that Margaret's been very helpful with and, and others, uh, it's, it's, it's a great to serve and I appreciate you all's confidence and I'll open the floor for Vice Chairman. I'd like to nominate Kim Atkins. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to nominate Kathy Butler because She's been secretary treasurer for 10 years, I believe, treasurer. And uh, I think it would be appropriate to move her up to uh, vice chairman because she has served so long as secretary treasurer. That's, I mean, that's my nomination. Okay, are there other nominations? I'd like to make a comment since okay. a comment was made about Kathy. Kathy's not here, and I don't know if you've talked to her, Coach about that um, position and if she's interested and approves or accepts the nomination? Well, I'd just like to put her name out there and if she doesn't accept, then we'll get there when she comes. <laughs> but I'd still like to okay. put her name out okay. there. That's, that's what you get from missing a meeting. That's what you get, okay. <laughs> because she has served so well for so long. And, and I agree that she has so well for a long time. I'm really impressed with the leadership that Kim Atkins has brought to this board. Right. She's been very involved in every aspect. Um, I, I just can't say enough about her. Um, we're very pleased to have her. And I would like to see her be the vice chair because I think um, 
that she will help JD in, 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 with regard to the vision that this board um, should have with regard to a lot of aspects. And so um, I strongly encourage you to vote for Kim Atkins. <laughs> okay. okay, we have two nominations for vice chair. Both of them are good. Yeah. I, I do know that uh, Kathy has been, uh, uh, last time she said she'd like to continue to serve as secretary. She's not here today, so I don't know what her wishes are, but uh, we'll certainly vote to see which one the majority of the board would like to have. And all those in favor of, of Kim, let's see your hands. We'll just do it right here and open. Okay, all in favor of uh, Kathy, let's see your hands. Then Kim, you are our new vice chairman. Congratulations to you. Thank you. And uh, then uh, we have uh, secretary, and I suspect that uh, someone would like to nominate that Kathy continue. And I'd, I'd be pleased to, to sell them. Second. Having to, uh, to uh, continue, and she's not here, if she wasn't here for vice chairman, then how can you <laughs> go on and nominate her for secretary treasurer? Well, she served in that role, and I believe that she'll continue to serve in that role. I did say yes or no. But if you have nominations for someone else, anybody want to nominate anyone else? All in favor of Kathy being secretary, say aye. Aye. Okay. I want to thank uh, uh, our staff. Uh, really, uh, Margaret does a lot of work from a legal standpoint, and then uh, Monica has really, I think, tried to respond to uh, board members' requests and what we need. I also want to thank the people at the Bridgetown Arena and LP Phil for their cooperation and working together. It's a great team and we have a lot going on in this city and it's great to be a part of Nashville, isn't it? Monica. Chairman Elliott, I just wanted to, um, just a point of clarification because I know you mentioned this and so did Rich, but at the last board meeting when I addressed the budget, I said that I would be back today with um, the FY14 budget and typically we have our Metro budget kickoff a little earlier in the month but like Rich said it's not scheduled until Monday so on Monday we'll find out what finance directives are as far as any cuts and improvements and depending on the deadline for submission into the Metro system it may require a special call meeting to approve for you all to approve our departmental budget. Right, thank you for reminding me that that, that is true. Just, just a few days uh, we would have had it, yeah. but uh, we don't have it today. Any other business today? Anyone have it? <coughs> okay, have a great day, everyone. The meeting is adjourned.